What's going on, everybody? Thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming unbiased playoff semifinal preview. If you want to stay updated with the latest highlights or previews, hit that subscribe button, click notification bell, and select all so you won't miss another video. In the first semifinal matchup, we have the Clemson Tigers squaring off against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in a pseudo ACC national semifinal matchup. I've done a few Notre Dame games, but this will be the first time I have previewed Clemson this year. Usually, I will start off with the tail of the tape between the two teams, but this time around, we have so much data to go through. I'm going to start out with the resumes of the two teams. Without further ado, let's start the show. Coming into the playoff last year, there was no team that had a greater resume than Clemson, with an average F-plus opponent ranking of 47th, along with four wins against F-plus top 25 teams and eight wins against F-plus top 50 teams. The difference from last year to this year is night and day. There is only one win against an F-plus top 25 team, and that was a nail-biter against Texas A&M early in the season, and it is the highest ranked opponent they have faced this year. The media didn't give Clemson a lot of heat for their schedule, but this is rough. They are right behind Oklahoma as far as facing the worst defensive competition this season, with their average team being Arkansas State who is 65th in that metric. However, if we are being objective, they are doing what they are supposed to do on offense with their number 7 ranking in offensive S&P+. But due to the lack of solid defenses on their schedule, that could bite them if they happen to get stopped on offense more than what they are used to. In fact, they haven't faced a defense ranked higher than 28th in defensive S&P Plus all season long. There are good comparisons to work with here, but Clemson fans shouldn't be happy seeing Texas A&M on this one. The Tigers had difficulty running against the Aggie Stout rushing defense with their running backs being held to 72 yards. I know Kelly Byron ran for 62 as well, but he is no longer on the team. The best passing defense they faced this year was Duke, and Trevor Lawrence completed 55% of his passes at 6.6 .6 yards per attempt, but that is not a great comparison considering Notre Dame is 8th in passing defense S&P+. For defense, Texas A&M makes their appearance again, as Kellen Mond went absolutely psycho against Clemson's secondary, throwing for over 400 yards with a 50% success rate throwing the football. The Dukies show up again, but this time in rushing offense, but Clemson held them to under 3 yards per carry. However, Duke had a 50% success rate running the football, but they were down early in the second quarter and they couldn't get anything going in the second half as Clemson pulled away. Notre Dame has the worst resume among the playoff participants, but they had the second best win among the playoff participants beating Michigan to start the season. In fact, they are the only team other than Alabama to hold a top 10 win against a team in f ranking. I will give the Irish their due here. They beat five top 50 teams and they have faced the second toughest defensive S&P Plus schedule behind Alabama. There's one concern about the Irish in this game. They haven't faced a team higher than 22nd in offensive S&P Plus, and they have the lowest rated opponents in offensive S&P Plus of the four playoff participants. As expected, the Michigan defense is the closest defense that resembles Clemson from an overall defensive S&P Plus standpoint, since Clemson now has the number one ranking in that department and Michigan is at 7th. However, Ian Book didn't get a chance to face Michigan's defense, Brandon Wimbush did. So that doesn't help much in his case considering the Notre Dame offense got better with Book running the show after the third game of the season, but they haven't faced a top tier defense during this stretch as well. With Brandon Wimbush, the Irish offensive success rate was 33% and they had a postgame win expectancy of 39% against the Wolverines. It can also be said that the Clemson pass defense is considerably higher than Michigan considering they are at 6th and Michigan is at 20th. For Notre Dame's defense against the Pitt rushing offense and Virginia Tech's passing game, they both resemble Clemson in this case. The Panthers ran for 4.48 yards per carry when you remove sacks, and they had a rushing success rate of 41% against the Irish defense. Tech threw for barely 6 yards per attempt against the Irish, but Ryan Willis completed 60% of his pass attempts, and the Hokies had a 41% success rate throwing the football as well. There are no surprises here when you're reviewing the tail of the tape. Both teams haven't faced an opponent this high in S&P+. This would be Notre Dame's second top 10 team in S&P, while this would be Clemson's first opponent ranked in the top 10 in S&P all season long. Something is going to give in this game, and we're going to find out just how good both of these teams are in this case. S&P does give Clemson a win expectancy of 66%, and they are a 12.5 point favorite in Vegas in some books. So there is a lot more orange when Clemson has a ball, but there is some iris green here. Notre Dame's defense is sneaky good. They may not have the speed the elite defenses have, but they are well coached and they are ranked in the top 5 in defensive S&P+. The Irish is a top 5 team in defensive explosiveness as well, so if Clemson is looking for the big play, they may have to find a better alternative because the Irish doesn't give up a lot of those. Clemson will probably change their approach in this game and take their time going down the field, leaning on the running game. Notre Dame is not particularly stout in their defensive line, so the Clemson running game must get going and give Trevor Lawrence some help in this game. If Notre Dame can shut down the run and force Lawrence to throw into the teeth of their top 10 pass 
pass defense, which allows 75% of their opponent's passing averages. That could lead to some frustrated fans in Clemson, South Carolina if the offense is still happen to be slowed down. However, the Notre Dame defense haven't faced an offense ranked this high all season long, so something is going to have to give in this matchup. I will be very surprised if Notre Dame is able to run the ball against Clemson, in fact, do much of it at all. Clemson's defensive success rate will be the highest ranked of all defenses Ian Book is going to go up against this season. The last game against USC, they were ranked 25th in that metric and the Trojans made the Irish work a little bit harder than they expected to. They were held to a success rate of 37%. If there is a soft spot for the Clemson defense, it would be their secondary. They have had some games where it made you wonder if you were watching Clemson's defense at all. As far as Notre Dame's running game, I think they're going to find it difficult to run against Clemson's front. This front is allowing 55% of their opponent's rush averages and that doesn't happen often. I don't recall a rushing defense this dominant since the Alabama's groups in 2015 and 2016. The keys to this game is very simple. For Clemson, they have to maintain balance on offense. Trevor Lawrence can't be a freshman in this game. He is now a sophomore at this point in the season, and the Clemson rushing attack may get resistance against this Irish defense, but if he can loosen up the Irish by throwing the ball and running it from time to time, it will open it up for Clemson. For Notre Dame, they have to start out fast. SP Plus has the Irish as a touchdown underdog, and Vegas has them as a double digit underdog. Clemson has had games where they got off to a slow start against mediocre competition, and their talent took over. If the Irish can start off fast and keep the game close heading into the fourth quarter, I think they'll have a shot in this one. The computer has the Tigers winning this game at a score of 31-20. The Tigers have allowed 49% of their opponent's scoring average and they have scored 148% more of what their opponents usually allow. The Irish are no slouches themselves. They allow 65% of their opponent's scoring average while scoring 118% more than what their opponents usually allow. I don't think we know anything about these two teams until they play each other. Neither team had a strong overall schedule and there are some question marks about these two teams. We have seen Clemson's secondary struggle against quarterbacks that can stretch the field vertically and we haven't seen them face a top 10 pass defense in the advanced metrics. We haven't seen Notre Dame's defense face an offensive S&P Plus team rated higher than 22nd all season long and an offensive line as physical as Clemson has at the point of attack. I don't think this game is going to lean to the computer projection, but I do believe that it's going to be closer than the experts think, and Clemson losing Dexter Lawrence on defense due to a suspension is something to keep an eye on. Clemson is indeed a better team on paper, but if you were to put a gun to my head, I think they win the game, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout victory. I like the Tigers winning this one to the point of 28-24, to and they will punch their ticket to their third appearance in a national championship game. And that's all I got for this playoff game preview. Let me know what your thoughts are on the game in the comment section below. Give me your score prediction and also tell me why your respective team is going to win the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. All I ask is that you give the video a like. And if you love college football as much as I do, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest previews and the occasional highlights. Thank you for watching.